Today on The Dish, James Beard award-winning chef Renee Erickson, who's crafted an illustrious career defined by her culinary prowess and dedication to showcasing the flavors of the Pacific Northwest. Her portfolio includes two cookbooks and nine establishments, each committed to locally sourced high-quality ingredients and playing a pivotal role in shaping Seattle's gastronomic landscape. Her restaurant, The Walrus and the Carpenter, served as the perfect spot for us to start a mini food sojourn through her Seattle staples. Just past the docks that line Salmon Bay in the heart of Seattle's Ballard neighborhood is an oyster bar meets restaurant that celebrates the bounties of the Pacific Northwest, The Walrus and the Carpenter. It's a pretty magical place to be a cook. And I'm incredibly proud of it. You know, like I like, you know, I'll, I'll fight with someone from Boston about whether our seafood's better. Renowned chef and co-owner Renee Erickson is a Seattle native with a passion for showcasing the region's finest offerings, like a slightly smoked salmon served with homemade herb cheese and grilled toast. This tastes, I mean, I'm a, I love salmon, but this is beyond, I don't know, it tastes beyond my normal salmon. Yeah, it shows up really well, it's delicious. The house specialty, Hama Hama clams, which are manila clams locally sourced from a seafood farm 40 miles away on the Hood Canal. Simmered in butter, shallots, and garlic, they're finished with a splash of cream and tarragon. I have a really close relationship with the farm. Um, my husband and I met there. Love at first sight. I mean, I was mostly, you know, wondering if he knew enough about oysters to be selling them. <laughs> Erickson's culinary ties to the Evergreen State started in childhood. Born and raised in Woodenville, just northeast of the city, she was influenced by the nature that surrounded her. In the summer times, my folks um, bought a cabin about 45 minutes north that looks out over the water. And so we, when I was a kid, we would go there, and that's where um, I became really interested in seafood, I would say. And while that may have been the initial spark, Erickson admits she didn't plan on pursuing a career in the kitchen. I have no actual culinary training whatsoever. I have a painting degree from University of Washington and thought I would be a teacher. Um, went to school in Rome and at that point kind of really fell in love with the idea of food and how it's part of people's lives in a way mm -hmm. that it really wasn't mine. Now, I didn't come home thinking I was going to be a cook. I came home thinking I want to go back to Rome. But things soon changed when Erickson began working as a server at a French restaurant in Seattle. Do you remember when you were working front of house, in a, what drew you? I just felt like I was like, you know, walking around being like, I have no idea how to tell you how this wine tastes. Or, you know, and it's not that I couldn't learn. I just was like, I'm too, I didn't get it. But I did know how to follow a recipe. So I just asked if I could start to come in in the morning and bake, essentially. So I would, you know, read things and follow direction and, and it worked out. At the age of 25, Erickson nice. set aside her pursuit of a graduate degree in fine arts to purchase that very restaurant, Boat Street Cafe. 26 years later, she has nine unique establishments to her name, her Seattle food empire collectively known as Sea Creatures, with her eye for design helping the creative process. The giant glass sphere is filled with amazing plants from all over the world. I mean, to have a restaurant in that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's uncommon for sure. Encased inside the spheres at Amazon's headquarters is Erickson's Wilmot's ghost. Oh, wow. Right? What an incredible space. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh. <laughs> and look up, right? Yeah, right? The geodesic dome, which opened in 2018, houses what she calls a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. An edible love letter to Italy lies within an ode to her time spent in cities from Venice to Rome. So my walk to school was basically from the river to Piazza Navona and then to Campo dei Fiori. And then through a market every morning, surrounded by you know vegetables and people carving artichokes when in season. Memories I swear you could taste in every bite. Yum. <laughs> It's those personal experiences Erickson and her Sea Creatures team reflect upon when creating each restaurant, from menu to design. Opening the Walrus and the Carpenter back in 2010 was perhaps the most hands-on of all. 
we were much more kind of bootstrapping it. We, you know, like my dad laid the patio that's still out here and the mirrors that are here were from my uncle's like storage and we turned, they were old doors oh, that we wow. turned into mirrors and we don't do that anymore, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> thoughtfully crafting a backdrop for each kitchen's creations. Erickson gave me a sampling of some favorites. A pork chop with cabot cloth-bound cheddar on top, served with pickled chard. A classic Parisian steak tartare with shallots, capers, lemon juice, and hot sauce. These are rye toast, so you can just create your own little, My own little rye toast. And for dessert, a bread pudding, which Erickson first served at Boat Street Cafe. There's some booze in there. It's definitely a favorite. People love it. Um, it's intense. Like some people actually eat a whole one, which is a little, I worry for them. But, um. <laughs> but a whole one of these is a different story. From Sea Creatures Cafe chain General Porpoise, these are the crowning jewels of Erickson's internationally inspired dishes. So these are inspired off of a donut that I had in London, and they're filled with different creams and custards and things. I want them all. Yeah, right, they're all for you. <laughs> so, Hold um, on. <laughs> oh my God. They're real good, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, it's fun, right? Rip it open, there's oh all that. <laughs> this is unreal. They're real good. That unabashed pleasure is one of the things Erickson hopes all of her customers, no matter the restaurant, leave with. But that's not all. I hope they feel super cared for, like we want people to feel welcome and little by little I hope people like understand how much effort goes into all of our sourcing because it's, you know, it's certainly not the most financially wise thing to do, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it makes a, the food like a million times better. I want them to love it and come back basically. I remember days where like I would be like writing checks to vendors and like not a single guest would come in for dinner and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to die here. Yeah. But, you know, it worked out okay. Slowly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baby steps, right? <laughs> And I had such a good time with Renee. I brought you the bread pudding, or they yeah. sent the bread pudding. Have a bite. We also have the donuts. We can fight over those. You know, mm. the names of her restaurants are so interesting. Sure. I mentioned Wilmot's Ghost <laughs> in the piece as you're stealing a donut. That's for Ellen Wilmot, who would surreptitiously plant this, oh, wow. this flower around London. And she's got a new place, Lioness, coming out, which will be more small plates and wine. And she just does it all so well. Take a bite of that. Well, I, I will, but I just love how she put me in the moment when she talked about how she really fell in love with the idea of food because of Rome. Yeah. Because it's part of people's lives in a way that it really wasn't part of hers. And yeah. that's oh. how I feel sometimes we don't engage in food. Engage in eat that. The donut. Eat the donut. And Absolutely. Brooke has almost mm. finished the pudding, which I love. The oh, I'm, I'm going quick. Oh it's right. Oh. It's Italian. It's British. Is there like an organizing she principle? Or no, it's she, it's, each restaurant has its own um, oh. Uh, area of expertise, but it is different. She's got so, the seafood that she does, she does so well at a couple different establishments. She has a steakhouse-like place, and you, you saw the pork chop and the steak tartare. Obviously entirely different with the donuts and the pastry there. Try this. She, and, and Italian. She does it all so well. What is this so well. Oh, take a bite, it's amazing. Okay, Can cheers. You, cheers. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheers. cheers. Oh. 